Yeah, four years. Four years, four years. I am now going to head overland, more bicycling into Myanmar. Another morning in Kayak Padang, just outside of Mount Popa here, I'm on my way there. So yeah, I just uh, bicycled out of Kakmandu or whatever and I'm on my way up to Mount Popa where there's this beautiful temple up on a hill. I'm contemplating climbing the larger volcano that is beside this rock outcropping that the temple's on, but feeling like it might be a bit of a rush for the day and it might also be covered in clouds. So I think I'll probably just go to the temple. I'm not sure. See, apparently there's some monkeys that are really aggressive on the walk up to the temple. You have to go barefoot. I think 700 stairs up or something like that. But it's uh, it looks like a pretty beautiful spot. So yeah, but to get there, I have to bicycle up the side of this volcano, which is not not necessarily easy. It's almost as steep as it can get in places. At least it's not raining. It's hot. It's a pretty nice day. Blue sky. I might actually be able to get a view from up on the volcano. We'll see. Well, this is Mount Popa, and the staircase going up it. It's uh, sort of more crazy than I was expected. More of a tourist uh, trap. As you walk up, uh, it's pretty full on. And there's vicious monkeys. Can I see? Uh, and this guy is taking care of the monkeys with his slingshot. I'm not sure how he manages. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm up on Mount Popa now. Uh, bizarre place. It's like a whole village down at the bottom and they're all trying to rip you off on everything. People selling food for the monkeys and the monkeys are super aggressive and people are just throwing stuff at them and they're shitting everywhere all over the stairs. And then there's signs on the stairway up saying only put money for cleaning in the boxes. You realize why? Because people keep asking you for money for cleaning the stairs. Obviously they're just sitting there collecting money. It's one of those places that just sort of has the potential to be such a magical place, but they've just sort of let the tourism industry grow organically. And when it does that, it ends up being really sort of an unfortunate experience because just people start taking advantage of it, start overcharging, which is sort of sad. But it's a pretty nice place. It's a pretty nice place.
So I'm just on a roof here in uh, Bagan, uh, about to do an interview with a radio station in Hong Kong. The guy I'm going to be speaking to here, Phil Whalen, I met him in Hong Kong uh, when he wanted to do an interview with me. I don't know how he got put in touch. I think it was through a friend of a friend or something like that. And since then, he's basically been staying in touch and doing an interview with me almost every every couple months, if not more frequently. He's got a small little radio show there on Hong Kong Public Radio. Sometimes he talks to me a little bit in advance to, to figure out uh, what we're going to talk about, but usually he just asks me where we are and then we just sort of wing it. So sometimes it goes well, sometimes it's a bit awkward. I just woke up, so I'm trying to talk to you right now so that I warm up my voice and my mind so that I'm not speaking very slow. Cause speaking very slow on the radio doesn't work very well. So I had some coffee too, and maybe that sped me up a little bit. Because to me right now, it feels like I'm talking really fast, but I know to you, I'm probably talking sort of an average pace because usually I have to cut myself and edit out the gaps in between I speak because I speak so slow. I spend time to think about what I'm gonna say, I guess, because I'm not smart enough to just whip out brilliance all the time without thinking. <laughs> Uh, I'm great, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm on a rooftop in uh, Bagan, Myanmar. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm posting videos from when I sailed across the Pacific Ocean to, to actually get to Hong Kong in the first place. Uh, I sailed from, sailed from San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, when, when I was doing that, when I was filming this, I wasn't actually originally thinking of making a vlog. I was thinking of make, making a film at the end of the journey. But uh, considering the journey is stretching on so long, I figured I might as well start putting some of this material out there. So, yeah, I, I'm a few years behind on the vlog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I was trying to, I had to shift plans to, and give up on a sailboat that it was given to me on Borneo and get back on the bicycle. So I've bicycled from Thailand up into uh, Myanmar or some, some of your listeners might know it as Burma. Yeah, so I've been on the bicycle now for past long time. I bicycled uh, from the border of Thailand, Mesot to Yangon, and it was just torrential monsoon rain. Not the best time to be cycling there, although it was cool, which is nice, not, not too hot. Uh, and then I got to Yangon and I actually, uh, I got the flu. <laughs> so that was unfortunate, but I had to wait there for a while anyways to secure my visa for India, which I did, which is good news. But uh, because it took so long in Yangon, I'm now uh, overstaying my visa here in Myanmar. So. <laughs> not the best situation. Well, you know, I always question that. Sometimes I feel like my immune system is not in the best shape uh, because I'm just putting my body under so much strain. You know, I've, I've heard that like uh, some like serious professional athletes when they're when they're exhausting and they're, you know, like Olympians, when they're working out and training so hard, their immune system is actually fairly susceptible to getting sick. So they have to be really careful because all their energy is going to regenerating their muscles and not so much to keeping their immunity strong. Uh, so I, sometimes I feel like that's the case with me because I, I don't know, I don't, I mean, it's tough to say. I, I, I probably get sick just as regularly as anybody else would, I think. I think it's fairly an average. <laughs> Uh, well, I get enough food for sure, uh, but here in uh, Myanmar, the uh, the hygiene levels are probably some of the worst that I've seen anywhere. Uh, thankfully, I'm not a germaphobe, so I'm okay with that. Um, and I think most of the time, you know, it's it's not that big of an issue. It's just uh, I think there there is like it's pretty common for anybody who travels here to get at least one bout of some sort of stomach sickness, and I did. Yeah, I did, I did get food poisoning the first like week I was here. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah, un very unfortunate history here, and it, it, there's definitely some signs of optimism that they're coming out of that, and uh, uh, there's lots of amazing things happening here right now, and the people are just super friendly. You would never expect that the, they've been through what they've been through, and uh, very welcoming. Uh, uh, the language barrier is definitely pretty strong. There's not that many people who speak English, especially where I am. Like the majority of my time cycling in the middle of nowhere on small towns, uh, it's, the language barrier exists. So it's, it's, been, it's been unfortunate that I haven't been able to communicate to the people as much as I would have liked. Because I I I'm not here long enough. Um, they, they only give you a 30-day visa. And uh, that's not really enough to pick up the language. I mean, I try a little bit here and there, but it, it's, uh, it's pretty challenging. No, the beard is gone. I shaved. 
Uh, well, yeah, and absolutely, and that's one thing that I really love about uh, about this country is that people still use bicycles. It's so good to see like hundreds of kids riding to school on the bicycle, and then in Yangon there, I was able to take bicycle taxis places, which you know I never have the the privilege of getting getting taken anywhere in a vehicle because I never use motors, but if they're if they're if they're bicycling, it's all good. I'm okay to ride with them. So, I mean, it was only short distances, but it was a, it was a nice little treat. Um, but yeah, there, there's there's bicycle shops. I mean, they don't usually have the specific parts that I need for my bicycle because I have a fairly specific, different type of bicycle. And uh, but yeah, if I if anything simple broke, I could definitely find help. And yeah, in, in Yangon, I, I got a pretty much rework on it, new drivetrain, and and fixed it all up. Uh, but hey, the funny thing is, is that in the first place, it's actually not like my bicycle of choice. It's not even properly fit to me. I mean, it, it works, but it's actually a bit small for me because it was, it was the only bicycle that I could find when I when I lost mine in the Mekong River and had to find a new one in Vientiane. Uh, here in Myanmar, nobody specifically. I think a lot of the civil service groups uh, like are the ones that I would want to work with are actually working in exile. So. I think a lot of the, the people that I'd like to support and work with in the future, um, I'll be contacting once I leave the country. Um, I also don't want to be too active and ruffle the feathers here because I, I'm, I still need to leave the country safely. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you have to, you have to be careful. Um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm interested in is, uh, is sort of environmental and social justice oriented, and when you start. You know, digging around in those areas in certain countries, you, you, you can run into some trouble for sure. I'm gonna go and explore the uh, old temples here in Bagan, and then I gotta beeline it to the border with India and enter into India in, in Manipur state. And then I'll be in India. <laughs> I, I am really looking forward to India, yeah. Um, I've never been there. I, I love Indian food and the culture just seems fascinating to me. Uh, it also seems very affordable place for me to travel. I'm traveling on a very small budget, so um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, well, I quite likely will actually be in Nepal by then. Thank you, Phil. Cheers. I don't know why I didn't just bike back down, but I guess for some reason I thought bringing all that weight would be a lot. Anyways, joys of filming. Sometimes you have to do my hills twice.